hand over the floor uh, to you uh, to address us. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> as, as I said um, during our press conference, it's a special honor for me to be here today. Uh, and uh, I would like to use this opportunity to share with you some of our uh, key lines of uh, um, sustaining uh, our endeavor to uh, OECD. Um, I would like to start with a recollection from the beginning of this year. Immediately after Romania received the letter of invitation to start the OECD accession process, um, the Secretary General, uh, Matthias Korman, visited Bucharest. And, uh, I will uh, always mention that it was our first meeting, but uh, we uh, uh, very soon realized that we have a very good chemistry. Uh, there is a very good chemistry in between us, so uh, thank you very much for, for visiting us that time. It was at the end of January, and I remember very well the long discussion we had about the imminence of the Russian attack against Ukraine. There were several scenarios, and unfortunately, the most dramatic of them happened. A few weeks later, Russia launched an atrocious, illegal, unprovoked, and unjustified war against a peaceful neighbor. Many people died, entire cities have been destroyed, unimaginable atrocities were committed against civilians, and millions of Ukrainians have become refugees. As the EU member state with the longest border with Ukraine, Romania and the Romanian people have done their utmost to help Ukraine and the refugees that sought shelter from the war. Since the beginning of the conflict, over 3 million Ukrainians have crossed the border into Romania, some traveling to other EU member states, others staying in Romania for a short period of time. Almost 100,000 of them decided to call Romania their home for at least medium term. Ukrainian refugees benefit from support with free shelter, medical services, education and public transport. They have been also granted access to the labor market. We constantly adapt our support infrastructure to their concrete needs and think in perspective. I'd like to let you know very shortly that our government was the first one who provided the plan for integrating the Ukrainian people within our society. So the Ukrainian children have access to the Romanian schools, or they can choose an online platform which is connecting them with their schools or with the designated schools in Ukraine so they can continue their educational program. Uh, and we also have provided them with laptops, tablets, everything it was required to have them connected uh, with, their, with their country. So we are very proud also of offering to the Ukrainian um, uh, to, to choose uh, where they, they have to work and there are a lot of companies, uh, Romanian companies, which already hired them. Besides the refugee dimension, our efforts focused on political and practical solutions to facilitate the transport and transit of the Ukrainian grain to the international market. Romania is thus at the front line of the international effort to prevent the deepening of the global food crisis caused by Russian invasion of Ukraine. We are receiving Ukrainian grain by road, rail, sea, and the Danube River. Since the start of the invasion, the Romanian track support of Constanza has become the main gateway for Ukrainian grain shipments to the outside world. Around 10.1 million tons of grain 
and related products have presented and have been exported through or with the support of Romania to third countries. The next challenge for us and for you as well, our like-minded partners will be to agree on a pace to end prioritize for Ukrainians' reconstruction. Just two weeks ago, the meeting of NATO foreign ministers took place in Bucharest, where we committed to strengthen the partnership with Ukraine as our neighbors advance their Euro-Atlantic aspirations. The discussions reconfirmed the crucial role of the transatlantic relationship in ensuring the European security. The atrocious war waged by Russia against Ukraine has a destabilizing potential for the entire region and the world. We follow with great caution what is happening in the Republic of Moldova as well. To help the Republic of Moldova, Romania established, together with Germany and France, to whom we are grateful, a support platform for the country. On a bilateral level, Romania today provides almost 90% of the electricity supply needs of the Republic of Moldova. And Romania, Romania's gas infrastructure also offer to the Republic of Moldova an alternative route for alternative supply. Mr. Secretary General, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I became Prime Minister a year ago and joining the organization was the top priority from my day one. My enjoyment was even greater when at the end of January I received the letter by which we were invited to begin the accession process and I already mentioned your visit to mark that event in Bucharest. A few months later in June, as, as I uh, mentioned, in June this year we had the pleasure to receive the accession roadmap followed by the kickoff mission to Bucharest. And here I would like to express uh, my gratitude for all the um, members of, of your team uh, uh, who were coming to Bucharest and they were really uh, um, sharing with us their evaluation and show us the way uh, to uh, complete the initial memorandum and here we are today. So thank you very much for, for their professionalism and dedication. We have mobilized to respond to this, this challenge. I have reorganized the OECD Interministerial Committee into a national committee for accession that I chair and a special structure within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs led by a secretary, by a state secretary, sorry, who is the national coordinator of the accession process. I'm sure that all of you know who is in that position, the state secretary, it's somewhere on my right side, so if I will have something to blame for not <laughs> going as we expect to, so it's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. We strengthened the, the team and the center of the government. We are also strengthening the OECD team in our embassy in Paris. We have mobilized the entire Romanian administration for a structured dialogue with OECD. That is why now, when I arrived in Paris, I did not arrive empty-handed. A few minutes ago, I hand to the Secretary General, Matthias Korman, the initial memorandum of Romania. We are happy about taking the first step and confident that our memorandum provides a solid basis for the next stage of our journey towards OECD membership. I know that this process does not start from scratch. Over the years, Romania, Romanian institutions have worked with the OECD structures, and your expertise has been a great use to us in many areas. Corporate and public governance, competition investment, state-owned enterprises, fiscal policy, education, environment development assistance, to name a few. 
the accession process places us in a different paradigm. Romania does not see the OEC relaxation as a purpose in itself. Romania wants to use the process of relaxation as a catalyst for reforms, as an engine for change, as pointed out by the Secretary General. As someone well said, the journey is important as the destination. We will walk this road together and we will reach our destination together. As highlighted in the OECD Economic Survey of Romania, in less than 20 years, Romania has reduced its gap in GDP per capita to the OECD average by half, from close to 70% to around 35%. The population at risk of poverty or social exclusion had fallen to 30% in 2020 from around 50% 13 years before. I can offer other figures. In the last, in the last 30 years, Romania's GDP has increased nine times, the biggest increase in the European Union. The growth continues despite the crisis we are going through. The latest OECD economic outlook anticipates an increase in Romania's GDP of 5.6% for 2022, which reflects a strong recovery following the economic impact of COVID-19. Of course, there are still issues requiring attention, such as the rising inflation. The Romanian government has taken measures especially to protect the most vulnerable people to, pa to pass these hard times. At the same time, I have always believed that one of the effective answers to the crisis is investment. My government allocated the largest investment budget of the last 30 years amounting to almost 18 billion euro, aiming at relaunching the Romanian economy and supporting the business environment. And we increased even more the investment budget for the next year, more than 20 billion. <coughs> However, I would like to let you know that yesterday our parliament has approved the budget for next year, so what the figures which I am uh, sharing with you are already approved. It's for the first time when in Romania the budget is approved before the end of the first half of December. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we are trying to access your organization. <laughs> so, to these EU funds are added in support of reforms and investments that will accompany Romania's green and digital transitions. Our government is deciding to use every euro of the almost 90 billion provided by the EU through NRRP and MFF. Romania supports a determined collective action involving all relevant stakeholders in order to implement the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement objectives. We have an integrated approach of combating climate change, nature-based solutions in the carbon capture process, green technologies to reduce emissions from the energy and industrial sectors, behavior change through awareness and advancing education on climate change. I appreciate at the same time that the OECD continues to ask the right questions at the right time, such as the ones addressed during the recent conference organized by the OECD in Luxembourg, building trust and reinforcement, reinforcing democracy. Rebuilding trust in democracy in a period of successive and concurrent crises should be part of and parcel of our collective effort for resilience. Mr. Secretary General, your Excellency is for Romania. Joining the OECD does not only mean joining the group of countries where 70% of global trade and 90% of global direct investment takes place. It also means new openings. We will have the opportunity to share experience with like-minded countries from North and South America to Asia, as well as with our European partners. It means joining the group of countries that believe in the same values. We will work with the 26 committees. 
with the Secretariat, which I want to thank again for its permanent support, and with you, the Member States, so that the accession process take place in the best terms possible. In times of crisis, more than ever, it is important for like-minded countries to stand together and support each other. Romania offers a concrete proof that is such a country. Our democratic course of the last 30 years has demonstrated it. Our action for the defense of fundamental values since the beginning of the war in Ukraine confirm it. After the accession to NATO and the integration in the European Union, the OECD accession represents a milestone objective in further accelerating the adaptation of Romania for the 21st century. I trust we will walk this path together successfully. And I would like to uh, thank you again for all your support. I would like to thank you for uh, your patience and uh, listening uh, my my um, uh, my speech. And also, I would like to um, um, uh, let you uh, clarify if you have any questions. I'm available to answer uh, whatever you want to know about Romania and about our process to access the OECD. Thank you very much for your time.